we're going to see three progressions going from the very complex and difficult down to the very simple and easy. The first one, number one, is a very simple series of drills linked together in order to teach the young athlete, the learner in backstroke, how to go from a straight arm underwater pull to a nice bent arm underwater pull. This is done with the athlete in a backstroke position, good body position, head position, continuous kicking and just a skull at the bottom of their stroke, utilising both arms, elbows in a steady and stable position, fingers pointing towards the top of the pool, coming up thumb first and pushing down at the end of their stroke. It can then be practised with right arm, then left arm, to ensure that the athlete is applying force that drives them directly down the centre of the pool and not sideways. Forcing the athlete to swim in a straight line ensures that the application of force is done correctly. It's then practiced in a series of right arm, left arm, double arm. All of these skills are teaching good kicking position, the knees under the water, pointed toes, double arm, bent arm, with a wider or deeper position and the thumbs coming forward under the water right up to the shoulder line, stable elbows and extending back to the bottom of the stroke without pushing deep. Then single arm mid stroke, once again ensuring that the athlete travels in a direction straight down the lane of the pool. This drill should be practiced in the centre of the lane so the athlete is not touching the walls or the lane line. The elbow must remain stable. Here we have a combination of double arm, single arm. So the athlete practices the right arm, then the left arm, maybe in a combination of two or three, and then double arms. Not concentrating so much as pushing deep in the stroke, but concentrating on a low elbow and a high hand position without letting the elbow come back first. The next part of the drill ensures that the athlete, one, finishes the stroke deep, as you can see there, especially on the left arm, and at the same time pushes that hip high and that shoulder high out of the water, ensuring that you have good and continuous trunk rotation. This then develops into normal backstroke. Drills must be over-taught so that the athlete once completing their full stroke will have a slightly less than perfect technique that's been taught in the drill. Once the athlete has mastered the simple drills, you can finish the progression with a minimum maximum progression. This is teaching the athlete minimum strokes and maximum effort. Then of course you add streamlining off the walls in the starts with the dolphin kick, holding the upper body stable and working the lower body fast dolphin kicking. Drill progression number two continues to focus on trunk rotation. This is called hip shoulder chin rotation. Once again this progression is going to start with simple kicking on your back but introducing the athlete to being able to control their body position in the water and of course maximizing their reduction of resistance by trunk rotation and rotating on the side without the use of the arms or the application of limb force to facilitate that trunk rotation. This is done by the athlete having great control in the water using their legs and their lower abdominals and their lower back. It can be extended then to an arms folded position. It can then be extended to a, a super flexible position with the athlete pushing their hands down their back forcing the elbows deep in the water and the hips high. Of course, as you see the athlete rotate to the side, you can see the deep elbow position that's there. This, of course, is going to be advantageous later when you wish to teach that deep catch position, the all-important deep catch position. Here, the trunk rotation is practiced with a nice steady head position, continuous kicking, hands by the side. It then progresses to a third recovery, but continuous. There is no hesitation. The athlete does not stop kicking facing the roof of the pool. They practice kicking to the right and then to the left. 
Then it's extended to a full stroke hip catch up. You can see the athlete getting great acceleration through the water through the application of force of each arm stroke and resting by the side allowing the other arm to catch up. This is ideal in teaching good trunk rotation. The drill is then extended to two thirds or three quarter catch up without any hesitation whatsoever on the entry of the arm into the water. It's thumb first or back of the hand first recovery, accelerating from the top of the stroke into the water, no hesitation and a deep catch whilst maintaining good trunk rotation. It then extends into normal backstroke, trying to maintain continuous kick, immediate catch on entry, accelerating from the top of the stroke into the water, breathing in on one arm and out on the other. Then at the stage of the athlete's development, they can add speed to this drill by completing the drill with the same minimum maximum value that we've seen in the past. That is minimum strokes, maximum effort and adding both values together. It's important that good quality control be applied to these progressions. Constant supervision by the coach and great awareness of the athlete of doing things 100% right. Drill progression number three is a very detailed and very complex series of progressions, but once again, it starts from a side lateral kick. It starts from a nice body position in the water with one arm extended and one arm by the side. There must be a straight line from the leading wrist through the arm, through both shoulders and down the following arm. Once again, we have good trunk position and good body position with the shoulder high out of the water, the face out of the water, and the hip on the edge of the water. The swimmer can then skull with the leading arm, keeping a nice high wrist position and getting a feel of that front part of the stroke, which is going to allow a deep catch. It can then be done with pressure point skull. And this, of course, is for facilitating that high elbow, but deep elbow and deep catch. It's then practiced with a nacal paddle. Of course, this nacal paddle skull makes sure that the athlete presses and feels the water whilst maintaining this ideal body position. If you look at this athlete underwater, you can see the range of mobility in the back muscles that's ever important. The high body position, the continuous kick on the side, and the athlete getting a feel of the water. A high wrist must be maintained. This is a pressure point skull, but one that I really don't like. This is done to show you the amount of movement in that elbow position. While it's teaching a deep catch, it's allowing the elbow too much movement. It's important that the elbow be anchored during these drills. Here you see side lateral skull and catch. And you can see the athlete getting good forward movement through the water by the application of force in this initial skull and catch position. This is catch, catch and stroke every 12 kicks. Every 12 kicks the athlete will catch, then catch again, and then stroke, allowing good trunk rotation with a great accelerated stroke. Remember drills are about fewer strokes with more concentration and effort in each stroke. Now we drop the amount of kicks from 12 down to eight. This of course is going to allow more strokes, but more strokes done perfectly well and correctly. It is no good progressing from one step to the other if the first step or the previous step is not mastered and carried on. Here we have the athlete going nine strokes, nine kicks, seven strokes, seven kicks. Once again, increasing the number of strokes compared to the ratio of the kick. One cycle of 10, 10, 8, 8, 7, 7, 5, 5 and 3, 3, twice through should equal 50 meters for the younger swimmers. Remember, we're trying to teach distance per stroke and efficiency. Remember, it's the athlete who has to learn to travel 1.6 to 1.7 meters per arm stroke. But once again, we're going to reduce the kick in this drill to just six kicks. So we've moved down from 12, eight, and now to six, allowing more arm strokes. This is backstroke in slow motion, with the athlete trying to recall 
all of the skills they've learnt in each of the previous drills and steps. Slow motion is about swimming as slowly as possible but as perfectly as possible. This is windmill drill with the athlete working maximum trunk rotation, high turnover of arms and working to a race stroke rate. This is vertical arm, three right, three left, six double arm. Twice through should allow the athlete to cover 50 metres. Here you see the athlete stroking continuously with the right arm and then continuously with the left arm with one arm vertical. It's important that they reach high on each stroke and touch the opposite arm. This is arms by the side, but continuous arms. Once again, a full stroke ensuring that the application of force is driving the swimmer backwards. They're getting a deep catch, the bent arm, pull underwater, and continuous kick. Once again, for the experienced swimmer, the drill can be completed with the minimum maximum progression either using minus three, minus five, or both. Good streamlining and the athlete concentrating under pressure of doing all the little things absolutely correctly. There is no compromise when it comes to great technique. This is a progression of six slow freestyle strokes leading into six fast backstroke strokes. In the slow strokes, the swimmer has to mentally rehearse how they're going to swim in their backstroke. It then progresses for the athlete just doing four slow freestyle strokes and six really good controlled fast backstroke strokes. And then it progresses down even less again of freestyle with only two freestyle strokes and six maximum effort backstroke. There are some general tips for backstrokers. One of them is to swim with a coin or a rock or something small placed on the head. So the athlete must control great head position. Any movement in head position can cause an unbalanced recovery or lateral movement. This drill, kicking with a band, can allow the athlete continuous kicking in a nice high body position, simulating the correct hand entry position into the water. Kicking in backstroke is quite different than kicking in freestyle. In freestyle, when the athlete kicks, on the downward kick, the knee and the ankle are moving in the same direction. In backstroke, of course, with a nice toe-in position and the ankles out slightly, allowing the water to roll off the instep, with no movement through the knees, or pedalling the kick, the knee and ankle actually move in opposite directions on the up kick. When the foot kicks up, the knee is actually going down. Understanding the importance of sculling is also imperative for the athlete. A flat wrist gives no movement, a wrist down gives backward movement, and of course here you see a wrist up giving nice forward momentum through the water. As in all strokes, butterfly, freestyle, and most importantly backstroke, the underwater dolphin kick is extremely important. It's not a matter of going underwater dolphin kicking, but it's a matter of going underwater dolphin kicking fast. Here you see an athlete sculling, but their kick and their hip movement is too great. Because that kick is so deep, it causes too much resistance, as against the smaller kick on the side, which is much more effective. Some people will have different attributes and they must experiment to see whether kicking on the side, kicking on their front or on their back is more efficient than the other way. Some people may get speed out of sculling, others may not. Streamlining parallel to the surface and not the bottom is very important. Here you see an ideal position with the athlete kicking fast from the hips down and no upper body movement and that may be practiced by kicking along the bottom of the pool. Here you see two swimmers racing, one forward and one backwards. You can compare all three different ways of kicking underwater to find out which way suits you best. However, I believe that backstroke as a recovery tool for all swimmers is important, allowing a straight arm recovery, 
teaching good shoulder mobility, as you can see there, a great deep catch position which aids freestyle, breaststroke and butterfly, breathing on need, a great way to see backstrokers is to check whether they're at the top of their recovery, their armpit side right down to their knee is out of the water. That is, they've achieved maximum trunk rotation, maximum flotation and good shoulder mobilisation. Remember, you're trying to take the athlete through a full range of skills when teaching progressions. From the very earliest of beginners who relate to moving their arms fast and doing very basic skills to the senior athlete progressing right to the highest level of competitive swimmer using the most complex and difficult skills.